Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you from the TSEC Season 17 Super Final. This is in Round 7. Let's have a look at this game. Stockfish was playing white against Lila. The opening e4, e5, knight c3, which is the Vienna game. It's something I've tried quite a lot in online chess and sometimes over the board. Knight f6, we have bishop c4. This is an invitation for knight takes e4. So one of the ideas after knight takes there's d5. Well, that's that's the idea there, usually. So um, here, this variation is actually given a fantastic name, the Frankenstein Dracula variation. So the name, according to Wiki, was given by Tim Harding, who, by the way, is a correspondence chess guru. And if you want to play turnstile correspondence chess, check out chessworld.net. You can register via kingscrusher.tv. So anyway, he's a correspondence chess guru who also authored many great opening books. So one was this 1976 book on the Vienna game. And he called it the Frankenstein Dracula game because of the bloodthirstiness of the character of play, such that it would have been like a game between Dracula and a Frankenstein monster. So it wouldn't have been out of place there. So let's have a look here. Do we have these very bloodthirsty variations? We have Queen H5, fretting chapmate, knight d6, defending that, bishop b3 for a moment. So not taking on e5. That resolves a lot of the tension. This keeps the tension going. We have knight c6, and now knight b5 to try and lure the knight away from f7. G6, the queen comes back, again threatening knight takes, and then queen takes f7 mating. F5, and this is the end of the book given to both. We have queen d5, and now uh, Stockfish chooses queen f6. The main line move is actually thought to be, uh, well, not thought to be, statistically, it is queen e7. There's a slight difference between e7 and f6. On e7, uh, knight takes c7 check. This line has been seen quite a bit where, for example, here, white is getting uh, a small edge. So that line is interesting. So, uh, But here we see queen f6. So this is a little bit of a rarer bird move, but very, very interesting. Knight takes c7, check, king d8, knight takes a8, b6. The queen now, now goes back to f3. This is a very, very interesting uh, technical move indeed. It seems the queen doesn't mind going around potentially light squares and maybe even coming back sometimes. It's very, very interesting to provoke black into committing the kingside pawns. The queen on d1 has a good influence on the d file, and also this rook is uh, ready to come in via a4, a5 sometimes. So very, very interesting play here, queen f3. If we look at d3 instead, black can actually make use of the fact that um, the queen is on f6, not taking the parking space of e7 sometimes, because there's knight e7 here. After bishop g5, for example, then black will stand better, much better here in this line. So yes, it's a very key difference sometimes, this queen being on f6. Uh, so we have actually queen f3 though against this now, knight d4, and the queen goes to h3. You might think this is just really a little bit strange. Why is the queen going over here? f4 is played. If g5, c3, and g4, there's queen h5, believe it or not. And actually, white does well here after d3, threatening bishop g5, pinning the queen. Uh, so for example, like this, just pinning the queen. And if knight e6, there's actually a fantastic resource here. Can you guess what white plays? Because there's horrible pressure, it seems, on g2. OK. White can play h3 here, offering g2 and rook h2. This position is also very nice for white. So very, very interesting uh, stuff here in these lines. So we see actually uh, not g5, but f4. And now c3, knight c6, d3, and now h5 is played. You might think, well, what about this pawn, g5? The thing is, with g5, white can play the nifty queen h5, a light square blockade, and play even for g4 later. It's quite incredible the light square grip white can get 
you'd, you'd think after winning the rook. <laughs> it's like playing positioning on the light squares after. For example, knight f3, knight, knight f5, pardon me, knight f3, bishop e7, g4 is a pretty good restraint on the light squares. And in fact, queen f7 can be used. And this is going to end up being fairly okay for white. White can even do this because the bishop's holding from d5 to h1. So that's fine for white. Quite pleasant indeed for white. So we have h5 depriving the use of the h5 square and the queen just bounces back basically to d1 so g5 <laughs> queen d1 it's uh, maybe it's it can be considered pretty outrageous queen movements uh, the principle of not moving the queen twice in the opening has been violated here with very good reason though in this particular context bishop a6 we have knight e2 h4 and now h3 locking down those light squares uh, castling is a dangerous thing to do here after h3, as you might expect. Uh, black can generate quite sufficient counterplay and quite violent things could happen. For example, here uh, there could be bang, bishop takes f3, and quite nasty stuff happening with the form pawn, etc. That's to be avoided. So black would have severe counterplay. So h3, locking down the light squares. And yeah, it looks it looks like a really uh, interesting position. We have uh, e4, white castles now. D takes is also it seems plausible actually. This position not entirely bad for white, quite good in fact. So anyway, white castles and offers a pawn there for bishop c2, and now bishop a6, and now a4 trying to activate this rook. And also there's the idea of a5 and knight b6 sometimes. So bishop b7, a5. Uh, here, knight takes a5 was played. If b5, as an example, then knight b6 is useful to try and at least get something for that stranded knight. So here, white would be uh, doing well. And if bishop takes a6, by the way, then a takes. And that pinned uh, pawn. So that's white thing fantastically well there. So knight takes a5. It does activate this rook. And also it gives white now the a4 square. Bishop a4. All of a sudden there's some convergence of the bishop and queen on d7. We have bishop takes b4, knight c6. And now just snapping off that knight, it weakens a7. Uh, and But not taking on a7 immediately, but instead knight d4. If taking on a7 immediately, it runs into knight b5, full king c3, and a7. So this position is actually nice. Black can set up a light square blockade like this and should be okay, fairly okay. Black actually would be in the driving seat there with an advantage. Uh, so in, the, in, this, in this line again, if we just have a quick look again, um, instead of queen a4, c4 is... Uh, Actually, though, this this might actually be good for the uh, the dark square bishop. This white can play dynamically even here uh, with this, and that knight's immune because of bishop f6 check and rook takes a2. So if we look at this, white actually can get a, a decent position though. There, but uh, knight d4 was deemed stronger. We have bishop d5. Now queen g4 here. In fact. So very, very interesting, queen g4. Uh, if bishop g7 had been played, then it's safe enough to take it and take on a7. So bishop d5 was important. White still didn't take on a7, though. Queen g4, we have knight c8, rook d1, rook h6, bishop b2, as if the bishop is really interested in this diagonal. Bishop c4, locking down the c4 pawn. So just to put that on the board though, queen e7, c4, just activating everything. b5, this is very, very big, you know, knight c6 now. Uh, that's big advice for white. So bishop c4, pardon me, bishop c4, b5, rook h7, knight c6 check, king c7. If king e8, then there's rook d4 hitting that loose e4 and the bishop. That will be quite nasty for black. So this is very pleasant for white, even if uh, there's a temporary queen sack. 
it, the tactics work out very well for white. So uh, king c7, we have knight takes a7, knight d6, bishop a3. So all of white's pieces are actually really quite active and dangerous here. Rook f7. If knight takes b5, then knight takes b5, check, and then bishop takes f8. And if queen takes, then there's queen takes g5. The pawns are getting a bit dismantled. b5 looks at white's better there. So rook f7, we have bishop takes d6, bishop takes knight c6, very, very tactical move from Stockfish, trying for rook a7. So bishop takes b5 was played. If d takes c6, then rook a7 check, rook a8 check, queen c8, this is very dangerous for the black king. Uh, the black king's being harassed, white will end up winning material. Uh, that's very strong for white indeed. So uh, bishop takes b5, we have knight d4. Bishop d3, it's a wild position indeed. King d8, check. King 7 f3, trying to undermine this bishop and open up the e-file. Bishop c5, rook g8, rook g7. If here you might ask, bishop takes d4, white well, can actually put the king cozily on h1 and then look forward to queen takes g5 and this harassment of the king and then tactics like bang, rook takes d3 because the queen is overloaded there. On f6, and if check this position, well, it's a rook up and winning the queen as well. So, uh, for example, so rook g7, rook c8, bishop takes now, c takes, queen g6. Here, if queen takes d4, again, it kind of backfires. This self pin is no good for black's tactical health in this position because things like this happen, horrible things like this where the queen comes back to harass the d3 and win d3 and the rook is behind that pawn that pawn's going nowhere so white's winning that so queen g6 f takes queen takes queen h5 nasty move looking at e8 queen e3 check king h2 check and now f3 this is uh, a throw of the dice black's in a very bad state here exchange down if rook g6 then check and yes, there's coordination to win material like that tactically. And white ends up just winning, basically, with a winning position. So f3, bit of a throw of the dice. Queen takes. And yes, it's the exchange up for white. This is um, pretty straightforward for Stockfish to convert now. Let's have a look, though. Quite a few moves to convert. That's the exchange up. It's not even for a pawn, so the black pawn's under great pressure. This f4 is a fragmentation move to fragment those pawns to make them a bit weaker. And now they're going to fall off like ripe apples now that they're fragmented. And there's a past h pawn now, even though black has been given an extra pawn. White has emerged with a dangerous h pawn, past the h pawn. King cut off from it. So, great technique there, as you might expect. And Stockfish, of course, is accessing table base like no other engine quite often with millions of table base hits during many games, even from opening sometimes. Stockfish is known to access table base. So anyway, here, yes, it's all over by the shouting. White's queening first here. And it's uh, going to be checkmate here. It's checkmate. So yes, quite a gory Frankenstein Dracula variation. We've seen a few of those before on this channel. So yeah, very, very interesting, entertaining name given by Tim Harding for this, this opening and at the end of the game, this, this quiet prelude, bishop c4 inviting knight takes e4. So a fascinating part of opening theory of chess. Uh, so t is exploring really iconic, interesting cultural openings. And this is one of them. And in this particular variation, yeah, Stockfish did really, really well. Fascinating maneuvering with the queen showing some of the darker sides of this variation, this particular variation for black. Okay, uh, if you want to invite me for a game indirectly, just use kingscrusher.tv or you can use the bit.ly slash chessworld link there. Uh, if you want to come and chat, there's kingscrusher.tv slash discord. That's getting quite popular at the moment. There's those playlists, bit.ly slash Leela chess. There's also bit.ly slash stockfish chess. There's also, if for players, there's uh, like, for example, Magnus Carlsen, Bitly, slash Magnus Carlsen Chess, Fisher Chess, etc. Okay. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.